Good evening, folks, and welcome to the horror. The review which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths. They could not have expected to see as much of the mad and the macabre as they were to see that day. This is one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All right, Grandpa, we're going to let you have some fun with this one. No! Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Ursh, and this week we're doing another movie review. This is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Released in 1974, directed by the late, great Toby Hooper. And starring Marilyn Burns, Gunnar Hansen, Jim Seedow, and Edwin Neal. Alright guys, this is the one that started it all. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from way back in 1974. Now you can say what you will about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a franchise. It's kind of bumpy along the way. But I don't think you could deny the effectiveness and the power of the original. At least I can't. <laughs> uh, this film just feels so raw and realistic and gritty. It's got that camcorder feel, all grainy. This film feels like you found it up in the attic <laughs> and dusted it off and put it in the old projector. You know, it feels like an old lost home movie. <laughs> Uh, and that's just one of the things that makes it so great. And, uh, yeah, can't say enough about this. To me, this is a five-star classic that's one of the greatest horror films of all time. Uh, so the film stars Marilyn Burns in the role of uh, Sally Hardsteer. Uh, her and her brother, Franklin, uh, gather together with a bunch of friends, and they get in the old green hippie van, and they go off into the unknown, into the mountains of Texas uh, to check out their uh, father's old house. It's old, it's abandoned and decrepit, and they just want to have some fun, stay there for the weekend or whatever. You know, party, smoke some pot, drink some beer, you know, just have a good time. Uh, so they stop along this old gas station, and the old man there, you know, tries to kind of warn them, you know. Uh, you shouldn't go messing around no old house, <laughs> somebody else's property. Some folks don't like it and they don't mind showing it. <laughs> uh, so he tries to warn them, um, but they decide they're just going to do it anyway. Now, ah, screw them. We want to have some fun. So they go off into the old house, and uh, you can kind of guess what's going to happen from there. <laughs> Uh, this movie follows, I should say, establishes a lot of the tropes that a lot of horror films followed after this. That kind of wrong turn, you know, these group of naive teenagers going where they're not supposed to be and bad stuff happens. Um, but the way it's filmed, the way it's shot is just so brilliant. Uh, that a lot of people think this was a real. A lot of people think this is a true story. This actually happened. But it's really a fictional story. Uh, the one thing you can say is kind of based on reality is the character of Leatherface, portrayed in the film by Gunnar Hansen. Uh, he's loosely based on real-life serial killer Ed Gein. Uh, so really, that's the only part of this film that's kind of based on true story. But the rest of it is pure fiction. You know, the family and that dynamic. Um, so what happens is, um, kind of each person wanders off on their own. You know, Sally and Franklin on one side and their friends. Um. Uh, they need help. They want to try and get some help to get some gas, you know, because they ran out of gas. So they try and 
wander off on their own. Uh, one couple, you know, they're kind of screwing around. And they go off to this house to check it out. And then you get that great shot, which looks like it's shot from the ground up of that girl slowly walking into the family's house there, that white house. And you see these great shots of windmills and uh, and the yard with these broken down cars that, <laughs> that God knows whose cars they are. You know, it's like a, a whole bunch of cars, old abandoned beat up cars. And you see the farm, and then the girl walks inside the house, and she sees all these, like, bones of animals and God knows what hanging on the walls everywhere, you know. And, uh, and her boyfriend also stumbles into this room where he meets his fate. His fate at the hands of Leatherface, the classic character of Leatherface, uh, played brilliantly, by the way, by Gunnar Hansen. Uh, you see him grab the hammer and boom, the big sledgehammer, cold cocks him, and then he starts hemorrhaging, and then bam, you know, and then he, and then he slams that metal door, and there's just this feeling of horror, complete doom <laughs> that is one of the most effective scenes I've ever witnessed in a horror film. It's just like, oh my god, that just happened. What the hell just happened? You know? <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, these people just stumbled into a nightmare, a living hell. Who the hell is this guy? He's got this mask uh, made of human skin. <laughs> And he's got a chainsaw, he's got a sledgehammer, uh, then, I don't know, what does he work at the local slaughterhouse? And yeah, he does actually work at the local slaughterhouse along with his brother, uh, who they pick up along the way. He's this crazy hitchhiker guy. Uh, <laughs> now they say in, in the sequel, the names of this family is the Sawyer family, but uh, we don't find that out to the sequel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. That their name is the Sawyers, and uh, the cook in this film, his name is Drayton Sawyer. That's the guy at the gas station. is played by Jim Seedow, and uh, he's just great. Uh, I love the characters in this film. That's another thing about what makes it so great, is the characters. You know, Sally Hardesty, you get one of the original final girls uh, in horror. Uh, and, you know, Franklin and all the friends are the great characters, and they feel like real people. These don't feel like actors. These just pe feel like regular people down the street, you know? <laughs> they never feel like actors. Uh, that's probably why it's great that, you know, this is just a bunch of unknowns, you know? They're not established actors acting. They just feel like regular people. And that's what adds to the effectiveness of this film as well. And then you've got the crazy family, you know, they're out of their friggin' minds, you know. They're these uh, cannibals. They're a family of cannibals uh, who terrorize people and kill them off one by one and cook them up for barbecue, you know. At least that's what we assume when we see in the, uh, in the back of the gas station there's these stacks of meat hanging up, you know, and we kind of know what that means, even though it's never said that they're actually cannibals, but, you know, there's bones everywhere around, you know, in the house, and, and uh, they're killers, so we just assume that they're cannibals as well, but it's heavily eluded in the film. So what happens is, uh, each person is knocked off one by one by the crazed family, um, by Leatherface. Uh, and there's this great scene where uh, one of the girls who stumbles into the house tries to leave and he comes out and grabs her and carries her off into his house of horrors and hangs her on a meat hook. <laughs> it's so brutal. Um, but again, you don't see a lot of blood in this film. And that's one of the other great things. This film feels so nasty and so brutal. 
and so bloody, but it's not bloody, you know? <laughs> There's only very little blood in this movie. Uh, you see a couple spatters here and there. Even the scene where Leatherface hacks up Franklin with a chainsaw. And you just see the movement of him going like this and going over his head like this, but you don't see the cut happening. You just see kind of a little bit of blood spatter on him, but it feels so real. <laughs> uh, yeah, can't say enough about how effective this film is and how effective the score is as well. Uh, the score just gives such an impending sense of doom and dread. I don't even know if it's actually music. It's just like this noise happening and like banging on bells and weird noises. I don't know if it's actually music, but it's so effective. So subtle. It just it doesn't beat you over the head. It's just it just feels like doom is happening, like dread is happening in front of you, you know. And it's amazing. I don't know who did the score to that uh film, but it's it's incredible. I mean, it adds such atmosphere to an already <laughs> horrifying film. Um, yeah, but amazing performances by the family, too, you know. Uh, I have never seen such an example of pure insanity as that dinner scene at the end, you know, once they catch up with Sally, who ends up being the final girl. Everyone else is killed off except Sally. Uh, they kidnap her. Uh, what happens is Drayton Sawyer, uh, she ends up running away from Leatherface, and we see that great scene of Leatherface chasing her all around the fields and through these thorn bushes, and she's like trapped in a thorn bush, and Leatherface is coming down at her. What a great scene. I mean, it feels like it goes on for like 15 minutes of Leatherface just chasing Sally through the field. Uh, but she finally gets to that gas station and meets up with Drayton Sawyer. Well, he's the cook in this film. Later on in the sequel, he's called Drayton Sawyer. But anyway, uh, he still feels at this point like a regular guy. And it seems like he's trying to help her, you know. Uh, but of course, he has other intentions. Uh, he knocks her out with the broom and is like jabbing at her with the, with the stick. And uh, he kidnaps her, puts the bag over her, you know, and knocks her out and takes her off in his truck off to the House of Horrors with Leatherface. And the next time we see Leatherface, he's got this weird kind of old woman's face on him, and he's kind of got uh, a woman's getup. And believe it or not, Leatherface actually speaks in this film. <laughs> I caught it the last time I watched it. I was like, what? Did he just talk? He never talks. <laughs> um, but when Drayton asks him, you know, did they get away? You let them all get away? And he's like, ah, I'm not kidding. I was like, oh, snap, he just talked. But yeah, he has one little sentence in the movie. But I'll tell you, let me tell you about how great Gunnar Hansen is in this movie. Uh, what a great character. And uh, you can see why the legacy of Leatherface has lasted so long, you know. Not just because of the fact that he's based on real-life serial killer Ed Gein, but the performance of Gunnar Hansen in that original film. He makes these, like, weird, like, pig squeals in his voice, and, like... <laughs> and, uh, you, you could just tell there's something really wrong with this guy. Uh, like, he is not right in the head. And, uh, it might not all be that he's just a psychopath, but this just, he's like mentally uh, challenged, I don't know. There's something wrong with him, you know, not just, <laughs> he's mentally not right, he's not playing with a full deck. <laughs> um, and the fact that he's such a strong, big, burly guy, you know, that adds to the power of his character as well, you know. And uh, these guys work at the slaughterhouse, you know, the local slaughterhouse. So they're used to killing, you know. They don't have any problem killing. And that killing carries over to human beings as well. Uh, and what a brilliant performance by Gunnar Hansen. Easily the best to ever play the character. He just brings that sense of madness 
and like, man, what is going on with this guy, you know? Uh, and there's like a little bit of a, an identity crisis within him as well. Like some scenes you see him like, like he's being a woman and other scenes he's being like this crazy guy. And we see several different get-ups throughout the film, which is interesting. It adds layers to the character of Leatherface. Uh, and it's very interesting, and uh, Jim Seedow as the cook, Drayton Sawyer, is, is just so much fun. Uh, at first you trust him, and he seems like a normal guy, but he's really... And he's conflicted throughout the film, too. He argues back and forth with the family, you know, you don't have to torture the poor girl, you know. Uh, I don't like killing, you know. <laughs> and, like, I can't take no pleasure in killing, you know, <laughs> like... It's, he's like a little bit reluctant throughout the film, you know? Uh, whereas the other, whereas this hitchhiker is just plain batshit nuts. He's a crazy, psychopathic killer, you know? He doesn't care about killing someone, you know? <laughs> uh, we see how crazy he is, you know, when they pick him up in the, in the hippie van, you know, at the, at, towards the beginning. And he, like, cuts himself with a knife. And he, like, puts some ashes on the aluminum foil and, like, burns it and makes like a smoke bomb and it's like this guy is batshit he's nuts and you can see a lot of influence off of the hitchhiker character played by Enwood Neal and Chop Top's character in the sequel part two played so well by Bill Mosley so there's a lot of similarities there you can see where that was supposed to be his brother um yeah just an absolutely fantastic film with amazing cinematography and brilliant direction by Toby Hooper. It's raw, it's gritty, it's realistic, it's nasty. Um, you got, you know, the tropes that were established in this movie, like the whole wrong turn aspect, going away and not supposed to be, and then the whole final girl thing with uh, Marilyn Burns' character, Sally Harsty. Uh, just so influential is this film. It's just incredible. Uh, like I said, it's a brilliant movie. I give it two devil horns way up. It's an out outstanding horror classic. And thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared. Folks, don't forget to grab your Sean Patrick Urshan gear and represent the Horror Corner. Also, check out these awesome mugs we have, perfect for your coffee. And definitely check out the Horror Hangout live stream t-shirt and represent the legacy of the Horror Hangout. Check out the link in the description below of this video.